Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Panda family. In this video, I will discuss about lag compensator with great clarity. Before I start with my explanation, let me tell you the outlines of this video. In this video, first of all, I will discuss about basics of lag compensator. After that, I will discuss about S plane representation of lag compensator. After that, I will derive maximum phase condition for lag compensator. After that, I will explain lag compensator using electrical network and at last, I will discuss about body plot of lag compensator. So, let us start this video with first agenda that is basics of lag compensator. Lag compensator adds negative phase with the system. So, with lag compensator, output phase lags with respect to input. So, lag compensator adds lag network characteristics and with lag network characteristics output phase lags with respect to input let me explain that by waveforms here we have input signal that is sinusoidal signal at output side we have lag in phase so due to lag compensator there will be lag in phase at output side always remember this lag compensator that is acting like a low pass filter so it will be attenuating high frequency noise signals so lag compensator adds negative phase with the system because of which there will be lag in output with respect to input now i will discuss about s plane representation of lag compensator see using lag compensator we can add negative phase and that we do by adding one pole and one zero. Let me explain how. See here in S plane, we have horizontal axis that is real axis and we have vertical axis that is imaginary axis. Here we add one pole and one zero on left half plane. If you observe, here we have zero that is there at minus one by t and here we have pole that is there at minus one by beta t. And here beta value that should be greater than 1. Always remember in lag compensator this pole that is there on right side of this 0. Right. And that is possible only if this beta value that is greater than 1. So if you observe the transfer function then in transfer function 1 by beta that is attenuation due to lag compensator. Here we have 0 that is s plus 1 by t that is happening over here and here we have one pole that is s plus 1 by beta t and with lag compensator this beta value that is greater than 1 right now i will derive maximum phase condition for lag compensator to derive maximum phase condition of lag compensator i will substitute s is equals to j omega in transfer function of lag compensator so if you observe here we have transfer function of lag compensator in this let us substitute s is equals to j omega now we have transfer function g of c in terms of j omega that will be 1 by beta into j omega plus 1 by t and in denominator we have j omega plus 1 by beta t now with this transfer function i will identify phase phase phi that will be positive for zeros and that will be negative for poles here you can observe we have zero so for zero phase is positive that is tan inverse of imaginary component divided by real component imaginary component is omega divided by real component is 1 by t so omega divided by 1 by t that will be omega t and phase due to this pole that will be negative that will be tan inverse of imaginary divided by real imaginary is omega and real is 1 divided by beta t so divided by 1 by beta t that will come in numerator right so this is phase of lag compensator now i will identify magnitude magnitude of lag compensator that is having constant 1 by beta that is attenuation constant so that will be as it is and here for 0 
magnitude will be square root of real component square plus imaginary component square. So that will be 1 by t square plus omega square and for pole it will be square root of real component square plus imaginary component square. So that will be 1 by beta square t square plus omega square. So that is how we can identify phase and magnitude. Here we are dealing with to identify maximum phase condition. See maximum phase happens as and when you provide differentiation of phase with respect to omega and as if it is zero then we can identify condition for maximum phase. To get maximum phase we need to differentiate this phi with respect to omega and that should be zero. So here we have tan inverse omega t differentiation of that will be constant t divided by 1 plus square of this that is omega square t square and here we have tan inverse omega beta t differentiation will be constant that is beta t divided by 1 plus square of this that is omega square beta square t square and that is equals to 0. Now we need to simplify this. You can observe here this t and this t that is getting common and that is getting multiplied with 0. And if you take this term on this side, then that will be positive. After that, if you do cross multiplication, then this denominator that will come here, that will be 1 plus omega square beta square t square that is equals to this beta into this. So that will be beta plus omega square t square beta. Now we need to identify the value of omega for maximum phase condition. So here, we will be having 1 minus beta on this side and if you take this term on other side then we will be having omega square t square beta minus omega square beta square t square. Now if you take omega square t square beta common from this then here we will be having omega square t square beta into 1 minus beta and you can observe this 1 minus beta and this 1 minus beta that is getting cancelled. So we will be having 1 is equals to this means omega is equals to 1 divided by t into square root of beta. So here we have value of frequency for maximum phase. So this is the condition for frequency to get maximum phase with lag compensator. Now at this frequency I will derive value of phase and magnitude for that I need to substitute omega m in phase first. To get maximum phase we need to substitute omega m into equation of phase. So here we will be getting maximum phase phi m. Here instead of omega we need to substitute 1 divided by t into square root of beta. So this t that is getting cancelled and in denominator we will be having square root of beta minus tan inverse of omega beta t is there where if you place omega that is 1 by t square root of beta then this t is getting cancelled and in numerator we will be having square root of beta. Now we need to simplify this equation further. See this is an equation that is similar to tan inverse a minus tan inverse b. So that will be tan inverse a minus b divided by 1 plus a b. So here we will be having 1 divided by square root of beta minus square root of beta divided by 1 plus 1 divided by square root of beta into square root of beta. So here you can observe this square root of beta that is getting cancelled. In denominator we will be having 1 plus 1 and if you observe numerator then in numerator we have 1 minus square root of beta into square root of beta that is 1 minus beta and in denominator we will be having 2 square root of beta. So this is maximum phase for lag compensator. Now I will identify magnitude at maximum phase. So what I will do is I will substitute this omega m value in this equation of magnitude. Now I will substitute omega m into magnitude equation. So I will get magnitude at maximum phase that will be 1 by beta into 
square root of omega square plus 1 by t square. Instead of omega square, we need to place 1 by t square beta, right? Now, here you can observe this 1 by t square that is getting common from numerator and denominator and that is getting cancelled. So, here in numerator, we will be having 1 plus beta plus 1 inside square root and in denominator, we will be having 1 by beta plus 1 by beta square. So, here the square root of 1 plus beta plus 1 that is getting cancelled from numerator and denominator and square root of beta that will go in numerator and in denominator we have beta. So, in total magnitude that will be 1 divided by square root of beta, right? So, this is magnitude at maximum phase, right? Now, I'll explain lag compensator using electrical network. See, we can design lag compensator using electrical network using R1, R2 and C. Here, I will identify transfer function. To identify transfer function, I need to convert this electrical network in Laplace domain. So, here in Laplace domain, this V in of T, now that will be V in of S, this V O of T, now that will be V O of S and instead of capacitance C, I need to place impedance that is 1 by SC, right. Now, by applying voltage divider, we can identify ratio V O of S divided by V in of S. So, based on voltage divider rule, output V O of S, that will be input that is V in of S into impedance over here across output that is R2 plus 1 by SC divided by in total impedance that is R1 plus R2 plus 1 by SC. Now, we need transfer function, right? So, VO of S divided by V in of S that is transfer function of this electrical network. You can say that is GC of S, right? And that is R2 plus 1 by SC. If you take LCM of SC, then here we will be having 1 plus R2 SC and in denominator also we can take LCM of SC so that SC is getting cancelled. In numerator we will be having 1 plus R1 plus R2 into SC, right? Now we need to simplify this equation. So here we have transfer function and I want you to understand this equation in form of standard form which we have discussed earlier. Right. So, to have it, what I'll do is, I will take R2C common from numerator. So, here I'm taking R2C common from numerator and I will take R1 plus R2 into C common from denominator. Right. If you do this, then this C is getting cancelled and over here, we will be having S plus 1 by R2C and in denominator, we will be having S plus 1 divided by R1 plus R2 into C, right? Now, I will represent this equation in form of S plus 1 by T divided by S plus 1 by T beta. To have this, this GC of S, that is R2 divided by R1 plus R2 and here, if you observe numerator, then that is S plus 1 divided by R2C. And if you observe this denominator, then that is S plus. Now, you see, I am writing 1 divided by R2C, right? So, I need to multiply R2 as well, right? So, this is how I can simplify this equation. Now, to have this equation in standard form, if you carefully observe, here we have beta that beta is R1 plus R2 divided by R2. And if you observe the value of T, then that is R2 into C. If you substitute beta is equals to R1 plus R2 divided by R2 in this, and T is equals to R2 into C, then you will be having standard form that is 1 by beta into S plus 1 by T divided by S plus 1 by T beta. And that is standard form which I have discussed earlier, you can observe, right?
and always remember this beta value that is greater than 1. So here you can observe this beta that is R1 plus R2 divided by R2. So that is obviously greater than 1, right? Now I will discuss about border plot of lag compensator. See in lag compensator, we have one pole and one zero. Here if you observe the value of pole that is lower than zero. In S plane, I have explained that earlier. See here we have pole that is nearer to origin. So magnitude wise, pole is having lower value compared to zero, right? So here in terms of frequency, one should know in body plot, here we have frequency and with this frequency pole is happening at lower frequency and because of pole here there is decrement in slope. Initially slope is 0 dB per decade and after pole now slope is minus 20 dB per decade and if you observe over here we have 0 and because of 0 now slope is added by plus 20 dB per decade. So here slope is getting 0 dB per decade. And in total gain response that is acting like a low pass filter you can observe. So as I have told you earlier, lag compensator is acting like a low pass filter. Now if you observe the response of phase, then here we are adding negative phase. You can observe in total negative phase that is added. And over here, we have maximum phase that we are adding at certain frequency. That certain frequency is omega m. That is what I have calculated over here. You can observe that omega m that is 1 by t square root of beta. And at this frequency, we have maximum phase that also we have calculated over here, right? And at that maximum phase, we have calculated magnitude as well. So all the calculation that we have done it in this video and based on this calculation in future coming videos, I will be solving examples. Thank you so much for watching this video.